Welcome back everyone to Wes Explains Best. Today we're doing a CUDA software worksheet tutorial on rationalizing imaginary denominators. So when we're talking about imaginary numbers, we're of course talking about i, the designation i, with the, uh, that's equal to the square root of negative one. i allows us to handle negative square roots, otherwise we couldn't, we would say there's no real solutions, but now there's imaginary solutions that we can talk about. Now when we're dividing, it's very difficult to divide by an imaginary number, so what we need to do is we need to rationalize it. The whole premise in rationalizing it is using this, i squared. So we know that i squared is the same thing as the square root of negative one, times the square root of negative one. As we multiply two square roots times each other, we get the radicand underneath, which is negative one. So i squared being equal to negative one is gonna help us rationalize these denominators. So what we're gonna do here is we're, it's in the same way, like if we had eight radical three, we would multiply radical three over radical three, okay? We don't want a radical in the denominator, neither do we want an imaginary number in the, in the denominator. So because we can multiply both the top and bottom by the same thing, because this is equal to one in the same way that this is equal to one. So if we multiply it by one, we're not changing the value, we're just changing how it looks. So let's proceed from there. So we have the top times i, two i, and this is where it gets interesting. We have i times, eight i times i is eight i squared. Anytime you have an i squared, you need to think about changing it because we know that i squared is equal to negative one. So what we need to do here is we need to change this problem to two i equals eight times negative one. So we have two i over negative eight. We can simplify a little bit further. We can cancel out the two with that, with the eight, and we get negative four on the bottom, so we have i over negative four. I like to personally write the negative in the top. Okay, I think it makes it a lot easier. Okay, now let's move on to maybe a little bit more difficult problem. So let's go to number six. So number six, we see that we have an i. You don't need to multiply by nine i over nine i. You're just gonna give yourself a little bit more work. The only thing you need to rationalize is the i, so we just need to multiply i times i i over i sorry so now let's multiply the top we have to distribute this to both we have six i plus eight i squared an alarm should be going off we have an i squared over nine i squared we have another i squared here so what we're going to do first is we're going to change these i squareds so we're going to change this to six i plus eight times negative one over nine times negative one. So we get six i minus eight over negative nine. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put it into how you normally see it, complex numbers. In the case, a complex number has a real part and imaginary part. The real part usually goes first. So this is a complex number. So we're gonna put the real part first. We're gonna write negative, let's write it, uh, negative eight plus six i over negative nine. We have a lot of negatives here. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this divide by negative nine. I'm gonna factor out a negative well, one out in front of it all and put it in the top. So I have negative negative eight plus six i over positive nine. I'm gonna simplify that further. I'm gonna make that positive eight minus six i over nine. So now we clean it up a little bit. We don't want so many negatives all over the place. See how we had negatives right here before? So I just rearranged everything and made it a lot more neat. So I'm guessing your teacher is probably gonna want the same. Or if you see it in like a multiple choice or something, you might see it written like this and not like this, okay? So try to simplify further if you can. Okay, we're gonna try to look for a conjugate example here. This is very similar to when we have a problem like this, if we have five over negative two minus the square root of six, you wouldn't multiply by square root of six over square root of six because you'd have to multiply this by the two and we'd still have a radical in the denominator. Instead, we need to multiply by the conjugate. Well, what is a conjugate? Well, a conjugate is almost the exact same thing, negative two radical six, but instead of a minus, we're gonna put a plus. So let's apply this, oh, and what we do at the top, we have to do at the bottom. So let's apply this to the example with imaginary numbers. Again, we don't want imaginary numbers in the denominator, so we're gonna use the, the principle of conjugates to get rid of it. So we're at negative, negative two, we're gonna write six i, but instead of making it minus, we're gonna make it plus. One needs to be positive, 
one needs to be uh, negative. So we're do this to the top and bottom. Negative two plus six i. And let's begin. Now you're gonna see why this is important, why this is useful. We're gonna do the bottom first. So we're essentially gonna foil here. We're gonna multiply the first uh, outside, inside, and last terms. Now you're gonna notice that the two inside terms, the outside and the inside terms are gonna cancel, which is the whole point of multiplying by conjugates, but I'm gonna do it all for you so you can see the process. So we have negative two times negative two, that gives us a positive four. Then we have negative two times six i, that gives us negative 12 i. Then we have negative six i times negative two, that gives us, let me change this color to purple so you can see that it's different. Style purple, okay. So we have uh, negative negative, we get positive 12 i, and then we get negative 36 i squared. Anytime we have an i squared, a little alarm should be going off. Okay, but meanwhile, we're gonna distribute the five i times the negative two and the six i. So we have negative 10 i, and then we have positive 30, guess what, i squared, a little alarm, keep that in mind. Okay, let's simplify from here, all in purple. So we have negative 10 i plus 30 times a negative one, all over. Now look, this is the magic of conjugates here. So we have negative 12 i canceled with the 12 i. Like I said, this is the outside and the inside terms. They're always gonna cancel with conjugates. So really you just need to worry about the first and the last terms. That's something to keep in mind in the future to save you time. So then we have four minus 36, and we're gonna change the i squared to negative one. Let's simplify a little bit further. We have negative 10 i minus 30. And we have four minus a 36 times negative one, so that's four minus the negative 36, or four plus 36, which gives us 40. Okay, almost done. Now, one thing I recognize is we have a negative uh, 10 and a negative 30 in the top. So I'm gonna factor out a negative 10 from both of those. And there I'm, therefore I'm just left with i plus three. And then I have 40 in the bottom. Now I can reduce the 10 with the 40. The 10 cancels out, leaving you just the negative one. And the 40 cancel out, leaving you just the four. So we have negative i plus three. Really we should write the three first. Three plus i. Not that big of a deal, but your teacher will probably wanna be uh, addressing that. So then we have negative parentheses, three plus i. If you really want, you could go negative three minus i over four, and that is also the same thing. All these other problems are uh, identical to the ones we just did. Um, the only difference is once we get to these problems, you're gonna have to foil both the top and the bottom after you multiply by three, oops, Sorry, after you multiply by three minus four i to the top and bottom, you're gonna have to foil the, both the top and the bottom there. That's the only difference, but otherwise you guys have all the tools you need to complete this worksheet. Hope you found this helpful. I'll see you next time on West Explains Best. Have a great day.